Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we're going to the sweltering Sahara Desert where you'll be tribe leaders competing to build the most prosperous tribe. To do this, you'll be trading goods like dates, salt and pepper to gain gold and advantages to ultimately expand your tribe. Targi is a two player worker placement game where you can hinder your opponent's placements based upon the coordinates that you place your own workers on the 5x5 tile grid. It plays in less than an hour and is published by Cosmos. Today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. Now I place timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Targi is a worker placement resource management tableau building game for two players where you'll be trying to gather different goods like golds and pepper and salt and dates and using those to purchase certain tribe cards that will give you points in the end of the game. You'll be building your own tableau as you build these different tribe cards and you'll be trying to get rows of the same type for bonus points at the end or have them be all different. Some of them give you end game bonus points and some of them give you ongoing abilities. But players will be placing their figures on the edge of the boards, blocking players from placing opposite them, limiting their options throughout the game. It uses a very interesting intersection system which shows where is intersected is the card you'll be able to activate. And as they're activated, the cards of a different type come in face down so you don't know what's really coming up next round. And players will also take powerful actions on the border spaces as well. And the robber stops you from going places or causes you to lose goods. This is a very deep two player game that's played in under an hour. To set up, you're first going to find the 16 numbered border cards and you'll place them in a rectangle shape just like this in the middle of the table where you can both see them. You'll start with the number one card, all the numbers in the upper left hand corner, and you'll continue to go ascending one number at a time all the way around. Also keep in mind, if it's your first time playing, you may flip the cards over to the other side, which have uh, verbiage as to what this specific cards do, but I'm going to leave it like this as I'll be explaining these. And also notice that the 16 card is the last card placed and it's in the upper left hand corner. Next, you'll locate and separate out the two different decks of cards. You have tribe and goods. Once they're separated out, shuffle each of these decks separately because you want to make sure that they are kept separate like this. Next, you'll be taking the top cards of each of those decks and alternating which one goes where. So it's going to be alternating left to right and top to bottom like this. Now from now on, these are going to be known as center cards and everything around the edge is known as border cards. Now I've placed these here face down so you can clearly see it goes goods, tribe, goods, tribe, and so on and so forth. But when you're setting up the game, feel free to just place them face up since you know that you're grabbing them from the correct decks. So when you place the cards, it might look something like this. Then on the left side of the border, you can place the tribe deck face down next to tribal expansion and the goods deck face down next to caravan. Next, you'll set up a supply for the goods and the victory point tokens. We have gold, salt, dates, pepper, and victory points of one, three, and five. Next, each player is going to select a color, either white or blue, and you'll take the corresponding pieces, the three target markers and the two tribe markers. Then from the supply, each player is going to get two pepper, two salt, two dates, a coin, a one point victory point token, and a three point victory point token. You'll then find the gray robber figure and you'll place it just above the number one card. Then the last player to have eaten dates will take this start player marker. If neither player has eaten dates, then the blue player will go first. The object of the game is to have the most points at the end of the game. And mostly you'll be getting points by turning in certain resources in order to gather and display different tribe cards which will get you points, but other cards will get you points as well. And you'll be displaying some of these cards in your own tableau that will get you some bonuses in the end as well that we'll go over later. The game is played over multiple rounds with each round having five different phases that you'll go through and this will continue until any one player has actually displayed any 12 of these tribe cards in front of them. So let's go over the different phases. The first phase of each round is you're advancing the robber. Normally you would take this robber and advance it clockwise to the next card. However, in the first round, it just starts on the number one card. This robber will hinder placement of players' target figures and they may cause events as they get to the corners, but we'll go more over that later. 
The next phase is placing Targi figures, starting with the start player and going alternating turns with the other player. Each player will place one of their Targi figures. Now there's certain rules that you must adhere to. Number one, your Targi figure must be placed on a border card, one of the ones that's around the edge. However, you can never place them on the border card that is next to the robber, and you can never place them in any of the four corners where it has the raid symbol. But you can place it directly across from the robber like this, so let's say the first player plays it right there. Since it's the white player's turn, it, they'll go, but they cannot place one on the same spot that any other figure is, either their own or an opponent's. So let's say they place it right here, then it would go back to the blue player. Now no player can place a Targi figure that is directly across from border card from an opponent's Targi figure. So this cannot be placed here because all the way across the opponent's figure is there. So this is not a legal placement. So let's say they place it right here. So let's say this is how it might look after players have played all three. Notice you can place one opposite your own figure, just not opposite an opponent's figure. Then we go to the next phase, which is placing tribe markers in the intersections. So what you do is you'd look at your colored Targi figures and you'd find out where they intersect. This one's here and goes this way. This one's here and goes this way. So it intersects here. You'd place one of your tribe markers there and you'd do it for the other one. This one intersects with this one here. So this tribe marker would go here. You'd do the same for the white player as well. Now, most of the time you'll have two tribe markers out there, but sometimes like in this, this player only has one because the intersection point is in the same part and that's okay. Then we move to the carrying out actions phase and starting with the star player, they're going to activate every piece that they have on the board. Now they can do this in any order, but let's say they pick this one here. If it's a border card, they will remove this and put it back in front of them and they'll activate what this border card does. I'm not going to go over all of these right now, but this one simply just gets you a pepper from the supply. You'd place it in front of yourself. Now, if it's a border card, you never remove any of the border cards. They'll always stay there. However, if you use one of the center cards like this, this is a goods card. They would take this back and they would get this good. In this case, it is a single victory point. So they would simply take one of these from the supply and place it in front of them. Now, if it's a center card like this, this card will get discarded to its corresponding discard card. This one was a goods. So this will go into a goods discard pile just off to the side next to the goods draw deck. But it then will be replaced by the opposite type face down. Since it was a goods card that we got, a tribe card goes face down. If it was a tribe card that was get taken, then a goods card would go face down. Now let's show you how these tribe cards work. This player is going to activate this marker and they're going to take this card up and normally it's going to be paid for and put into your own display. So this player could spend these resources that's on the card into the general supply to place this and display it in front of them. They will begin to make rows and columns here. This starts up in the upper left hand corner. When displaying the tribe cards that you purchase, if you remember, this is the first one that we got. It's in the upper left hand corner. You're actually going to be building three rows of this that are four columns wide. Now, when you get a new one and you displayed it and pay, paid the resources, it can either go just to the right of a card that's already there, or it can go down below. You don't have to complete a row before starting another one. This is how it might look at the end of the game. As soon as any one player places their 12th, this will be the last round of the game and you'll go to final scoring that we'll go over in just a moment. However, if you cannot pay the resources or you choose not to, instead of displaying it immediately in front of you in your tableau as just shown, you can take it up into your hand. However, you can only hold one of these cards in your hand. And if you were to get another tribe card, you would not be able to keep it. You'd have to discard it because you can only hold one and you cannot exchange them with any new tribe cards gotten in the future. Later, we'll talk about how you can take a card from your hand and display it in front of you. And remember, since that was a tribe card that was taken, a, the opposite type, the goods card will be placed face down in that area. Now I'm not gonna go over all the actions again, but let's just say that this player had activated all their pieces. It would then go to the other player's turn and they will activate all their pieces in any order, just as we showed. So after both players have carried out all their actions in this round, the board would have looked like this. Then all the good cards and tribe cards that are face down will now be revealed and flipped over. This is going to give people new actions to look at for this next round. The star player marker will then be passed to the other player and we're done with the fifth phase, which is uncovering new goods and tribe cards. Now we're going to go back to that first phase, which is advancing the robber on a border card. And remember, 
and every round except for the first, it's gonna go one spot clockwise like this, and again, this means that nobody can go in that spot this round. When the robber makes it to one of the corner raid cards, immediately both players have to give up one of the things that are listed there. The slash means or. So in this case, each player has to give up either a victory point token or any good and put it back to the supply. Once this is done, the robber moves to the next spot like this, and this is the spot that nobody can go that round. The game can also end if in phase one, you're moving the robber and it gets to the last card, number 16. Players must pay one of those in the raid and then the game ends immediately. Now, in addition to any victory point tokens that you've gotten earlier in the game, you're going to add victory points for each silver cross in the lower right hand corner of the tribe cards in your display. To that, you're going to add points, possibly depending on the display that you've built. If you have a row that has four cards and all four of those are the same type, meaning they have the same image on the left there, you'll get four points by default for those. You'll also get two points for any row that you have four cards, but they're all four different. You can see that these four have different images on the left. That would be worth two points by default. This row here doesn't do us anything because it's not all the same or all different. You'll also look at the abilities of these cards because some of them were one-time uses and other of them were at the end of the game. Like this one says at the end of the game, you receive four victory points instead of two for each complete row of four different tribe symbols for up to two rows. So instead of this being a normally two, this card allowed this to be four. I'm not going to go over all of the end game scoring in these cards because they're written right there clearly and self-explanatory. And at that point, the player with the most points wins. If it's a tie, whoever has the most gold wins. If it's still a tie, the one with the most goods. If it's still a tie, the game ends undecided. Now let's go over the border actions that we have not yet talked about. The noble is how you're able to pay the cost of one of those tribe cards that you held in your hand and did not display. You can activate this to play that card to your display or to discard it to the discard pile, opening up your hand to be able to hold one again later. The trader allows you to trade any three of the same goods into a coin or trade any two of the same goods for any other good. The silversmith allows you to give two goods of the same type back to the supply to get one point or four of the same type of goods to get three victory points. Or you can turn in a coin to the supply to get two victory points or two coins to get four victory points. Tribal expansion allows you to draw the top tribe card. Then you can either pay the costs and display it or keep it in your hand if you don't already have a card in your hand. Otherwise, you must discard it. The caravan allows you to take the top card of the goods card, get whatever this good is, and then discard it. And the tribe cards also have ongoing abilities. Once you've displayed them, they are activated. For example, pay one fewer of any goods required to add target cards to your display. Or if you pay one additional good of the types required, you can display one card from your hand without using the noble action that we've already talked about. I'm not gonna go over all the actions because all of these are quite clear in the writing on the cards. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Targi and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, because not only will I be notified, but so will Cosmos. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.